So after seven is in the house. In the house. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's up, man? What's up? Good to be back. Be back on the set. That's what's man. up. Where y'all been, man? Living. I mean, what do you, I mean, it's like, can y'all believe it's been almost 30 years, man? Can y'all believe that? Uh, I don't know about 30. Well, it's I close like, to close like to 30, 30 since the inception, but yeah. 20 see, since we've been away. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, like, like you guys, like, I mean, the hits you guys had, you know, ready or not, and all that. When y'all were recording those songs, did y'all know? Yeah, this is gonna be a banger. When y'all were recording, did y'all have that feeling? Like, I can't say that you have the feeling, but just I think from the success, from the success that yeah. Face and Daryl had had previously, when we were sitting at home years and years and years and hearing all these great records come with, with big hits and artist after artist after artist, you kind of had a a little piece of your stomach that said, okay, if we can get some of those, right. you know, maybe we can do something. But, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It was a feeling because, you know, they were excited. Yeah. I think at that point to finally have us signed, uh, you know, uh, to uh, their production company and, and indirectly to Virgin Records. And I don't know if you remember that day that Face called us up to his house. He was living in Hollywood Hills and said, mm -hmm. you know, I got this song I want y'all to listen to. And he, uh, it was the first song was Ready or Not that he wrote. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was some... Felt like something special. Yeah, Turn out the camera, absolutely. B baby. Not this way. No. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So it was a. Uh, it felt like it was going to be something special. You yeah. Know? yeah. I mean, because like, I I just always imagine that like recording a you know recording a song that's as epic as you know I mean you guys had like a lot of them man you know but it's like, you had to have a like in your gut you had to know this one right here is gonna be special y'all. Yeah. You know. You know and you it, don't know yeah, because yeah, exactly. there's so many variables. Yeah. That, that so many, come into play with a record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fans, it's radio, and competition. I mean, we, we've so been much... in places where they would play one station's playing your record, and because you went to another station first, they stopped playing. We, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what was in the game yeah. back yeah. then. Yeah. So it was a lot of things had to happen, and for you to have a great record, like yeah. you can't stop, really yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. So what was the uh, the song "Natural High" and then the "Baby I'm for Real"? Yeah, how did that come together? Two two big songs for other artists. How did y'all get that? To, how did y'all get that to work? Who whose vision was that? That was a Daryl Simmons vision, actually. Yeah, we uh, we you know we always try to look at figuring out what was a song that meant something to us that was a cover song that we could do, and "Baby I'm for Real" was one that just kind of stood out. But then, I think it was Daryl Simmons' uh, brainchild. But our issue was the publishing factor oh. between um, Natural, High. Natural High with uh, Bloodstone mm -hmm. and uh, working it out with, uh, well, I guess it was Marvin Gaye. and Because uh, uh, Marvin Gaye wrote for the original. So they were able to work it out. Mm -hmm. they, um, where did y'all sit? Speaking of Marvin Gaye, where did y'all sit on the Robin Thicke, Marvin Gaye thing? Did y'all think it was too many similarities? Because I talked to, I forgot who it was I talked to. It might have been Tank. And he said that, you know, it's not really similar if you're going to be really technical about it. Yeah, but it's a feel. It's yeah, a feel. it's definitely a feel, and you know, um, it's kind of hard. I mean, what comes around goes around. Music, I, there, there are no new notes that are that right. are played. Right. All these play, all these notes get played a different way or another, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of hard not to, uh, not to touch on those things. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, I think a lot of people, a lot of musicians today, still try to capture you know, yes, a certain today. hints, Today's certain music. flavor of some of that music that was just big music that moved folks and, you know, try to build around it. So, gotcha. but gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. most of the time they not get caught with them seven million. Uh, you know, now, how long is this young man? Y'all been, y'all been, how, how long y'all been with this young man right here? Yeah. Since he well, was 12. Since, 12? Since he was, yeah, he was a young buck. He used to be on the tour bus with us. Oh, is that right? With his dad. Yeah. yeah. And he was a little guy. Yeah. I mean, he's been dipped in. In, in after seven music most of his life, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a journey. It's yeah. been a journey. Uh, starting off on tour and just you know acting like I was helping when I really was just looking, observing, <laughs> uh, observing, mm -hmm. and uh, turned into you know doing background work for Kevin on his solo project. Yeah, and he would slide me solos here and there when he would do after seven stuff on his solo um, run, and then turned into him calling me one day and saying, "Hey, you know." Mm -hmm. We about to take another run at this. Why don't you go ahead and fill that spot? Yeah. And I was like, hey, let's do that. That's cool. That had to be cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, God, you get asked, just, yes. hey, man, we, we, we need to fill another seat, man. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, he had been, you know, he's just been growing the whole mm -hmm. time, you mm -hmm. know, uh, from from uh, an individual who at first we had no clue that he sang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shy. So, 
Yeah, exactly. So finally, he let the word out peripherally. Yeah, when, and you, then, when you got fathers and uncles that yeah. sang like they sang, <laughs> you, you ain't always so willing yeah. to offer yeah. your... Well, you know, <laughs> so was, yeah. it, was it intimidating to some degree? Hell yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I mean, but you can hold... Clearly, you can hold yeah. your own. Yeah, but, well, you know, yeah, it, it, it was growth. It, yeah. it, it, was, still, it was getting yeah. there. It was getting there. But, you know, we, we... 20 years between dads and uncles and... Right. Son. That's right. a long time. That's a long, long time. time. And a lot of development. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. But yeah. we found out about it in a roundabout way that there was something that he had a desire to do and the talent was there. And so I was I thought it was a good thing for him to you know to just kind of cut his teeth starting backgrounds and you know, he's got a good ear. He's a musician as well. He's produced. And a producer, songwriter. Wow. Producer. You got yeah. kids? I got a daughter. You're a reproducer? I'm, I'm just reproducer. saying, you know, it's kind of like. That's right. Just, just throwing it out there, man. Yeah. I'm just saying, man. Don't hurt Everybody me. Everybody right? reproduces over you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> So, man, face on, on Dancing with the Stars, man. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You want to speak on that? Yeah. What I'm, would you like to know? Well, I mean. Uh, Who's really the the best dancer out of all the I, th- I think you had that guy that was there. <laughs> Him? Yeah, he's probably. Yeah, prob- probably. Because yeah. uh, what I can assure you of is you'll never see me there. <laughs> and I don't usually use the word never, but yeah. that word won't be, you know, I'm not using that one lightly. You won't see yeah. Kevon on Dancing with the Dancing Stars. Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> no? No. <laughs> Man. Man. So, so you've, Kevon, you've done... The solo thing, and you've done the group thing, man. But Keith would be somebody on Dance with Stars. Keith's a dancer. Keith, think about you, that. Get, you get that he's vibe that dance. he's a dancer. Yeah, he's, he, he, is he a dancer or is he a hoofer, man? I mean, no, you know, he's a dancer. He's a dancer, he's man. A dancer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, okay, yeah. now, what else was he saying? <laughs> no, I was saying, <laughs> so being a solo artist and being in the group, man, and right. you were in the group, and then and then you put out some solo stuff. Is, right. was, that, was that a little intimidating? Because you were, now you're out there. Keith ain't by your side. Melvin ain't by your side. It was, a, it was, it was a freeing moment, to be quite honest with you. It was for the first time I could make choices that was independent and I could go whatever way I chose to do. And and the, and the fact of the matter is I think that at that time, um, after Seven had made its run, the interesting thing a lot of people don't know is that even though when we were released from Virgin Records free from, uh, from debt, they allowed us to walk away debt free. Whoa. So that was back in 1996. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the interesting thing was at that time, even though we were a group that had catalog and had success, there were no other labels that had an active interest in signing us. Crazy. But that's what it was. But at that time is when I took the opportunity to go ahead and do solo. Well, yeah. why, why wasn't there an active? You know, we, you, know, you know, even still, there was probably, it was still to some degree a producer-driven industry. And the money that it would take to sign an act, they didn't want to play in that. They didn't want to play in that deep water anymore. And music was beginning to change. So, and I, and I say this point uh, in all honesty that as proud as we are of this new album that we have titled "Timeless," and we do believe that this music is timeless, it really works best of all because it's. 20 years later from the time had we dropped this record in 1996 97 i don't think that it would have been received in the same manner because people were beginning to music was evolving and going a different direction and i think now that for the last 15 20 years you've had all this other music you know that are you know that pops up goes away pops up goes away but people now i think are kind of ready for music that has you know great melody uh, has substance to it. It's got a great message in it. And more importantly, it's a signature sound of a group that they've known and grown up with. Wow, that's a great, that's a great point. Are, are we ever going to see R&B groups again, man? I mean, you I think know. so. You think so? It's, it's possible. It's going to be different. You know, it'll be reminiscent of, of an older time. I think you'll have good songs, but, you know, melodies evolve. A lot of things um, visually evolve as well so they probably won't look exactly like what you know we grew up seeing but that version of a group will be back it has to yeah. it, it, it may it, it may it may happen because i mean we were somewhat reminiscent of the groups that we knew right right you know that's that's what we took you know that's what this strong love for r&b traditional r&b came from and when we got into the industry finally after many many Many, many, many 
many, many years. <laughs> it took us a while before <laughs> it happened for us, right. but we finally got there. But all that music was music that we loved and grew up with. And mm-hmm. uh, you can, there's a litany of different types of groups from the Shy Light, Stylistics, Delphonics, Dramatics, the Spinners, I mean, the mm-hmm. OJs. All those groups were groups that influenced us and what, and you know, with real songs, real melody, you know, and, and a message in the music. So, well, I was going to say that, you know, in reference to groups, I think the, the model for the labels has changed. And that has what affected whether or not groups exist or don't exist. Because groups are one, it's two people or more. You're right. And in most cases, it's three, four, five. Unless you sound to blackness, there were like 53 of them in that group. So it's like, it's <laughs> right. like you know. <laughs> maybe they're, maybe so, they're going to so be back. Who knows? <laughs> that issue really becomes moving that many people from point A to point B yeah. and the cost involved with it and the industry turned into a solo artist industry. Yeah, it really that's did. That's all we've seen. Really, it, it, and that's because it's one person and their handler, some keep, dancers. Keep, so it, it's really about money. It's, yeah, it's always about money, but the it's, model it's the business changed. model. If we can get out of one person, we yeah. can get out of three, four, five. I mean, I remember back in the day, man, Cameo had like, there was like eight or nine of them and then all of a sudden it was like three. I got one question. Is this America? Yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about the money. It's the it's the paper chase up yeah. here in this in this country. If it's about nothing else, it's about that money. I heard that. Yeah. Let's talk about Timeless, man. Yes, sir. Yes. So how, so from the time you guys decided we're going to do this album, Timeless, from that time to its completion, how long did that take? It's probably just about maybe a, a little over a year. That's maybe. a little over a year. year before Is that it was about mixed average? And mastered. Well, no, no, no. Uh, it could have been shorter than that, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, the truth is, I think it was accumulated uh, over a year's time, you know, specifically because of schedules mm-hmm. and trying to get everybody in the same place in Los Angeles to Kenny's studio. And, you know, it was all in week chunks. So yeah. I think in all, it was probably a week, a, a month and a, and a week or so if we were to add them uh, the uh, different uh, times we were there. Okay. M- maybe I-, I would go so far as to say, let's, let's safely say I'd say it was maybe about three months. You I- think so? I say, I, of actual like recording and, half, and all two that. Two and a half to three months by the time, because all the intent. And it might it might be a little less because every time we came out, there was something, mm-hmm. something happened that deterred us from being able to get right. the full breath mm-hmm. of the time that we had committed. I kid you not. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's how it worked. And so we might get a song and a half, maybe two songs in when we thought we were gonna knock out four. Didn't happen have to come back in and and it all started with the thought that we might just simply do a single right we were looking to just throw a single out here and kind of test the waters mm-hmm. um and see where what it felt like and where we would be but it turned out that um a lot of these labels independent labels just simply were not interested in an act like an af- after seven which has traditionally and typically been known to be the type of artists that sell albums and that market for selling singles is skewed to a younger a younger artist. Right. You know, and they, they'll sell units and they stream. We're not we're not gonna get anything stream of any significance. So they said if you wanna do something with us or if we're gonna do something with you, you have to do an album. Okay. And we didn't believe them. Oh. <laughs> so we shopped some more. Mm-hmm. And we got told the same thing again and again. So finally it, it, it dawned on us that if if we're gonna do this, we we're gonna have to do a record. So I went back and told Face, I said, only way this is gonna work is if we do a whole record. Wow. And so he said, Okay, well, let's roll up our sleeves and see what we can do. Wow. So I, I always ask you guys these questions like this, like if it wasn't music, what do you think how do you think you'd be making your living? <laughs> you wouldn't want to see me. <laughs> <laughs> sexual chocolate. Everybody give it up a sexual chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it would still be in music, I think, for me, in one regard or another, you know, um, writing and producing is something I've, I've always done, and um, I'm in management now and, you know, developing my own acts, so um, I would be in and around music in some capacity. Yeah. Yeah, what definitely. About, what about you, Keith? Uh, I'm jack of all trades, master of none, <laughs> skills in a mirage of areas, uh, but I, I own a construction company. I've been doing that for about 11 years. Okay. Um, kind of created that doing our parts away. Um, but, you know, I, I 
kind of do a lot of things, but the main thing is the music and the construction. Okay. All right. Now, what made you get into construction? Well, in high school, I was a uh, A student in wood shop, oh. metal shop, architectural drawing, mechanical yeah. drawing. Yeah. And those skills and attributes kind of stayed with me, even though I never used them because college sent me into business and I ended up going to Chicago and working for a claims adjusting company. Still wasn't using the stuff that I learned in high school, but once the low came and I had to figure out how to make make it work. Right. Um, I started off doing cellular towers. Really? We were, yeah, we were doing, you know, building cellular towers, um, but the insurance factor was so high, the risk factor involved with it was so high, I kind of stepped away from that and just took the same entity over just into doing construction. Oh, okay. And so it just kind of blossomed from that. The did you did you, you did a restaurant too for a while, right? Well, yeah, I started a restaurant back in what, like ninety five, mm -hmm. ninety six or so, mm -hmm. for about six years. I had a barbecue joint in Atlanta. Uh, food is great, reviews are great, but in Atlanta, people want their food around the corner. So you got to have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten locations. Yeah. But we ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I was in Midtown in Atlanta with okay. Buckhead, so yeah. I was in a three mile radius, more entertainment in that area than anything. And but I wasn't really in the black community, oh. so I didn't get all the support that yeah that people who eat my food, which was soul food and barbecue, yeah, would have come if had if I been in the in the black community. But me not being from Atlanta, not knowing, I, I put the business in the wrong spot, long story short. Okay. Location, location. But location, location, location. location. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are back, you is there gonna be a tour? Gotta be a tour, man. A absolutely. God's God's got that. Know, yeah, yeah. Uh, what'd you say? I said God's got that. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> does. Right now. Is that and right? I, he it. absolutely does and he is. So you know we're looking at something something popping off sometime in the top of two thousand seventeen. Uh we're really excited to go out here and support this new music. Um, it is the kind of music I think that people have been waiting on. So by the time you, you, you put this music that we have here on this record uh, alongside the, uh, the catalog that we have, I think, uh, it's going to be a great opportunity to, uh, kind of show our wares again in, in a, in a new light. So who do you guys like now? Who do you, the guy that's out now? Do you, is there anybody out there that you like, you yeah, know, that's pretty good. You, yeah. You gotta... I mean, oh yeah. There's some good music out. Fan. I mean, I still, I, I like what Miguel does. Um, yeah. Ro James is was really nice. nice. I even I like what uh Bryson Tiller's doing. Um there's some talented guys out there. Of course, yeah. you know, we're we're family with Tank and Tyrese and right. you know, that whole circle of, of traditional R and B singers. Um Anthony with, Hamilton. Anthony Hamilton, Layla Fa Hathaway. Fantasia. Fantasia. I love it. I, I love that new Fantasia song. Yeah. She got that throwback. Yep. Yeah. I like Sleeping the new Mary the record. Yeah. 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 You like thick of it? Yeah. 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 You like, like thick of it? You know what I do, but it, to me, I always like wonder. Like the way my mind is, is like, okay, how is uh, Kendu gonna feel about this? Well, you know mm. what? It's interesting because I thought that that song she was going to introduce that song from a different perspective, based upon everything, all the conjecture that you've been hearing about uh, the splitting up of, of, of the two of them. That I didn't think it was gonna be a, from this perspective of who's gonna love you like I love you. I thought it was gonna be done with you out the door yeah. so it's a, it's a different approach to yeah. to the situation so it's really kind of a it, don't, she doesn't really beat him up no like no, I thought she, she might up. have yeah. you know but maybe so, that had been just too easy for her to beat well, him up well you know the, the ladies are like cause she's coming back with something of some pain and we love the pain that Mary sings about so yeah you know so yeah. It, it'll work for her it's a very it's a, it's a great song I mean it's yeah. just uh, yeah. I didn't know she was going to address it that soon yeah you know, I mean, just because she announced they were divorced, it doesn't mean it ain't been in the works for a while. Right. We, we're not in that. We're not in the. We're not in that group. We're not. We're not in that circle. We right. don't know. Right, right. Right. You hate to see anything like that happen and stuff like that, man. But you know what's really cool though, and to talk about Babyface for a second, when he and Deion Sanders sat down, mm -hmm. and man to man, right. You know, yeah. You can start seeing my ex wife, our kids, and they and Dion was like, yep. And, you know, and they just hammered it out. Right. Man, how often does that happen, yeah, right? right? That Not doesn't happen, all. you know. I mean, I can remember my ex-wife, you know, the, her, her her husband. I remember him and I having, we were always cool. Mm -hmm. And I always thanked him for stepping in for my daughter, mm -hmm. things like that, right? And when I would go down and visit my mom, you know, he lived in that area and stuff. He would always, like, call 
how you doing, man? Stuff like I mean, we were always like really cool, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, you know, and then when my ex wife passed, you know, she like never changed the life insurance. Okay. So the check was in my name. Right. Right. And I told him, I said, send me the check, I'll sign it, send it back to you. Yeah, and he just looked up. at me and I was like, dude, that's not my money, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, yeah. it's in my name, but and that was that wasn't intended for me. It's yeah, intended exactly. for you now. And, and, right. But what what you what you experienced and how you dealt with that is not typical. So it's not a typical thing. No, that's not cool. like that. Yeah, that's I mean, it's but just with it with love. I said you dealt with it with love, and that's what's missing in any and all situations yeah. is love. If man. you let the love show up, then what you did is the only thing that you could do. You yeah. couldn't live with yourself in No, that. man, that was like I and I told him I said this ain't my money, man. It's your money. I said, yeah. you know, and, 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 yes, and, you know, for a couple of years afterward, we would, because they had two sons together, we would, Christmas time, we would send them a little something, the boys and stuff, right? right. And, and it yeah. was always, you know, it was always cool. And so, you, you, <clears throat> did you ever do anything solo? No. No? No. Not, you weren't interested in doing anything solo? I've done some stuff gospel, but haven't, haven't done anything when I just recorded it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you? And, like I'm your dad, right? And you? No. <laughs> no? Do you want to? Um, now you're asking some real in-depth questions here. <laughs> um, yeah, I think at this point in my career, in my well, life, did you hear that key you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, man. <laughs> Got me rebelling things. Yeah, man. <laughs> Oprah. I'm starting to call you Oprah. Uh, Oprah. <laughs> I'm Oprah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind it, man. I think yeah. it's in me. Um, I don't know exactly direction-wise where I would go because I've got a lot of musical influences and things that I love. I love all music. So um, before I would sit down and really take it seriously, I'd kind of want to map that out. Um, would but, you look for the family's blessings as, because as absolutely. close as you guys are? And I, stuff it's like no that. choice. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. You can't yeah, leave what? home without it. Well, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> no I'm tell you what uh, there's a selection on this album. I think it's selection number eight, I think it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. Number eight is titled Everything. You get a chance to hear what he does as a vocalist. Okay. You know, so you, you I think uh, if that's a choice uh, and a road that he wants to go down, I think he's very capable. Okay. Yeah, on his own. Thank you. So, 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 are we, I'm sure we're going to hear more solo stuff from you, man. I mean, it's well, you know, I, you know, I, I really can't speak on that right now. <laughs> that would be a, um, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> see, because um, quite honestly, we didn't know that this record was going to even happen, mm-hmm. and to to have all of these elements come together in the way that they did, right. that only God could have brought these things together, and I promise you. Uh, as my witness that that is how this record came together. I don't, you know, I can't sit here and honestly say, you know, after this record's done, we're going to go back in here and record because quite honestly, I thought that this was it, Mm -hmm. this record. And and I can't say that uh, I'm dead set on that position right now today, but that was the reason why I changed the title because, hey, Michael Jackson had the this is it, Mm -hmm. and it sounded like, well, I can't do that. But it made me think about what kind of music is this? What what is this music? And and um, I think on our third album it was called Reflections. There was no song on that album titled Reflections. How often does that happen? It doesn't happen very no, often. Yeah. But but what it, what it does is it's like it speaks to the body of the music. Mm-hmm. And for us with Reflections, it was it was for us giving us an opportunity to take a look back on the road that it brought us to where we were, you know. Uh, and how we had grown and how we had evolved, because I think by that third album, we really began to feel like we had arrived in terms of knowing who we were, what our our sound truly was as a, as an act after seven. And so to have 20 years go by and everything like that, and we really stopped and thought about it, and thought, you know what, maybe this music represents timeless music. Right. Because, um, and one of the great things about this record being written and produced was that I, uh, I, I said this to my uh, brother face, metaphorically speaking, I said that, you know, two things. We need a Bentley. We can't be rolling in a Cadillac. We can't be, you can't see us rolling in a nice 600 Benz because y'all probably got some 600 Benz is out there in the lot right now. Well, when after se- <laughs> But when <laughs> After 7 rolls around the corner, yeah. for you to take notice of After 7, we're going to have to be coming in a way that we never have. Otherwise, oh, After 7 came out. Right. So we needed to do something that was going to uh, make people take notice and make some noise. So metaphorically but speaking, I was just telling them, you got to bring me your heat. We have to have your heat if it's going to make a difference. 
And so he heard me. So at that point he heard me, and that was kind of the production and the writing. And the other thing was we didn't want, did not want any lyrics that were remotely, indirectly, in any kind of way, reminiscent of any of the hits that we ever had. Like, I didn't want heat of the moment, the word heat. Of, I didn't want because I could, because I can't stop. Mm. And I didn't, you know, and just what. I, well, why? Because too often people use that as a hook That's right. to try to take you back to a time and place. To, and I don't, I don't need that. I, I don't want that. I want this fresh. I want this new. But the feeling and the idea behind it will take you there. Mm -hmm. But not because of... Um, Come and talk to me. I don't. I don't. Sl we're not trying to slip that in there. I want this to be fresh and new and reminiscent of what it was, and the reasons why you fell in love with After Seven from the very beginning. Wow. Okay, I got you. So when you complete an album, obviously you don't. Obviously you don't complete right? it, and then and then you release it the next day. It doesn't work that way. But do you need like take a vacation? Before you you rear up for promotion and do you, you take a week off? You're, you're, like, you're speaking Spanish. I don't know what they <laughs> speak. Some, some, some yesteryear, some yesteryear. He's like, get back to the vacation. grind. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it took a lot of painstaking and sacrifices from every individual, from Melvin, yeah. Jason, myself, and Kevon. Um, it took sacrifices, stopping what you were doing. Right. And we were all working, making a living, and got to stop and go do it. Mm -hmm. And so... Those are sacrifices, so it, it's not easy, but those are the things you're willing to give up to get to do some of the things that you love. I mean, mm -hmm. we're blessed to have 25 years mm -hmm. in the music business mm -hmm. doing something that we love. Yeah. And people work 25 years at a job yeah. and hate it. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah. I can tell you, we love singing right. Yeah. because it's something that we just naturally do. And mm -hmm. it, yeah. you know, yeah. it just makes you feel a certain way. But, but you know, a lot um, of people don't understand they they think your radio your song gets on the radio and you're a star. They have they have no clue. Oh no! I, I mean, I've talked oh. to you know Dance. legends like yourself and and people. You know, they they just like in a, in, in, and a guy told me one time, you can. This is so true in show business and even in life that nothing is like it seems. Oh no, true. Nothing. As nothing a matter of fact, like when the song gets on the radio, that's when the work starts. Yeah. That's when you really really have to. That's when you start losing sleep. That's when you start really putting your grind down because now it's about supporting um, the record. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest misconception is that, you know, a lot of times when you're on an independent tip, you know, once I get on the radio, I'm good. You know, all, all we need is radio play. No, no, that's hey. where it starts. Yeah. They, uh, and now it's changed so much, right? I mean, it's just not radio anymore. You got the Internet thing going. Right. And, yeah. So, you know, so right. how here, how people hear music today is... Yeah. 180 degrees different than what it used to be. Right. You know, there's... Is there, it better, though? Well, I mean, it's it's better, yeah. in, it's better yeah. in the sense that it, it yeah. offers many people numerous options on how and when they choose to listen to music. Once upon a time, you could only, only listen to it on radio at the same time. The beauty of that was everybody heard it at the same time, so everybody caught that feeling about mm. the same time. That was so cool, though. It was. It was, it was cool. It was. It was. But yeah. see, so now, now it's different. You know, you've got so many different avenues. Yeah, it's, 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 a hard, it's hard to have impact. Right. When you're an R&B artist coming back with one lane of travel in adult contemporary, urban adult contemporary, it's difficult to get saturation. So we have to use these other mediums, but... The music industry from the R and B side, old school, I don't think can ever bust back through big yeah. enough to get the mainstreamers. Right, 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 right. Come back and pay attention. But I, mean, I, I just remember back in the day, man, it used to be like, come, hey, you, you know, I'm being on the radio. From mm -hmm. my perspective, you'd be like, yo, coming up at four o'clock, I'm gonna play that new after seven, right? right, right. And everybody heard it, right? right everybody, exactly. and that was like, that was so cool, right? Mm -hmm. And now it, it has splintered off into so many different things, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. Different game. Well, I mean, I think from a, a younger perspective, maybe I think it, it, it isn't better, in fact, because, you know, it diversifies the way that we buy, consume and listen to music. Um, so there's more opportunity for you to get access to music that maybe didn't have certain budgets in place to get on radio or to get in some of the bigger plays. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> it is a feeling. It's, a, it's an emotion and a moment that when you hear something on the radio, and it and it's heard and accepted. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't think you can replace that with anything else. Man, 
Man, I could talk to you guys all night, man. Mm-hmm. But I know, I know y'all hungry. I know. Who told you that? No. Well, because I'm, because I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> hungry. <laughs> and I saw you at the hungry meeting. <laughs> but yeah. man, it is an honor to talk to you guys, man. Really, man. Well, thank you're, you. You're, thank you. Your music. I'm surprised people ain't put child support on y'all for having the music in the background when babies were created. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> Shoot, we need yeah. somebody paying us. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Royalty. Music play. Yes, 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 yes. But <laughs> good luck with timeless man i thank mean you, you know just, it's you. gonna be awesome and you guys are awesome you guys are legends you guys are just you, you guys are everything man. yeah that's yeah. that's after seven all right on the smooth ride home thanks yeah. for watching